On the morning of the 1st August 2012, when the New York Stock Exchange opened, the Knight Capital Group was ready to make money as they recently modified their algorithmic router. That router produced orders that flooded the market with trades. But after around 45 minutes and 400 million shares, they had to shut down the system. They realized their new update was a complete mess. And when everything was said and done, they had actually lost more than $10 million every minute. And that code in the program, which was not active before, came to life after their modification. The apocalypse has happened and the company resulted in bankruptcy. Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of Jay Sparrow Start Programming. My name is Ben and in today's video we are going to talk about that code and why it is dangerous if you don't remove that code or maintain your programs. As said in the intro, that code can have devastating consequences. Many programmers often work on a program and see that code creeps in over time that is redundant and has no function. Instead of removing the code, they come up with excuses like who knows what will come in the future, maybe I'll still need the code in my project. Also the sentence, if the code works, don't touch it, is often used and every programmer knows it. But this is a big mistake, because as in the extreme case of Knight Capital, that code can be activated during updates or modifications and perform completely opposite functions as one wishes. Removing that code is not only important to avoid such errors, but also plays a very important role in quality management when programming. If code in a program is unusable, it should be removed immediately. But how exactly does that code come around? That code appears due to lack of quality control, basically through code that performs incorrect behavior. An example is messy code which is hard to understand or through a bad code structure like spaghetti code or god classes. Also a lack of comments and bad documentation can lead to that code. Other examples are simply unmaintained code, the usage of obsolete or old libraries or frameworks, even duplicated code. All of these examples are the most common reasons why that code occurs. But what exactly is that code? That code is code that actually executes nothing in the program. It can be code which is no longer used or called, it can be a commented out of block of code which happens quite often, or it can be code appearing after a return statement that's unreachable. But who exactly writes such code? The answer is simple. Basically, everyone who is not maintaining his sources. People think, okay, the function I wrote gets obsolete and therefore I can leave it as it is. They start to implement new functions because they haven't got time in the project to rewrite stuff or make new architecture decisions. They ignore the noble software process, have stress and therefore don't care about obsolete functions. This can lead very easily to misbehavior in certain functions. No programmer has ever had the intention to write that code. It just happens and that's why maintaining software and refactoring code regularly is so important. That code is typically produced in the following ways. People think, okay, this code doesn't do anything now, but I can use this code part later in the future. Or they say, well, I don't really know how my program is executing tasks, but the outcome is correct. So I don't want to touch my code because now it works and if I do something, maybe it won't work anymore. It basically happens when they don't take time to maintain their software or do not test their code. There are also programmers who have already heard of the term that code, but they are ignoring the fact because they don't understand why their code should be removed. They argument with phrases like this. They say, look, I have already written this code, all my efforts are already spent, so why should I remove it? Or they say, if I delete this code now, my coworker will feel uncomfortable as we wanted to use the code maybe in the future. But this is a misconception and I want to explain you why. If your code is already written and your efforts are spent, who says that this code will ever be used in the future? And if you delete this code and your coworker feels uncomfortable, why are you even emotional about it? Changing requirements in programs has nothing to do with emotions but with daily business. The consequences of that code needs to be understood. With that or redundant code, the complexity of your program will increase a lot and will get messy. Your code will get unnecessarily long and therefore the readability gets worse. 
That code is misleading and the time needed to get used to a system increases rapidly. Also refactoring and maintenance gets more complicated and the worst case is that you can accidentally revive that code which happened to Knight Capital and resulted in millions of losses and therefore bankruptcy. So I hope you can clearly see that removing that or redundant code is absolutely necessary and a duty of every professional programmer. The last question I want to answer in this video is, when is the best time to remove that or redundant code? The answer is, as soon as you see it. When a function is replaced, the old version must be deleted. Don't think about the future, just remove it because your code is not needed. You should also consider removing it during a refactoring process of your program or before major changes where you for example implement new features given by your customer. Don't think about making several warnings a little bit less red, a little bit less orange or yellow. Be professional and just delete it. We at JSparrow know that maintaining and refactoring software can be very tedious and tiring work and not many programmers are happy to do it. That's exactly the reason why we made code quality and refactoring our main business field because this was the most interesting topic which accompanied us for years in our professional career and where we wanted to give a solution to programmers. As a result, we designed JSparrow. JSparrow is your Java refactoring partner and with JSparrow you can easily remove dead or redundant code with just a click of a button. You can also remove code smell, find and fix bugs and apply Java best practices at the same time to your project. We already applied JSparrow to several open source projects and the result has been incredible. JSparrow fixed issues which saved these projects thousands of hours and therefore also hundreds of thousands of dollars because we all know that developers are expensive. All of that can happen for you with just a click of a button. There is a reason why thousands of developers worldwide already use JSparrow and work with it. The best part about JSparrow is that you can download the free version and use it for an unlimited amount of time. We are offering you 20 of our most liked refactoring rules for free and all you have to do is just to look in the video description. The link to our official homepage is waiting for you. After you have signed up for free, you can simply drag and drop JSparrow to your developer environment and start to use it. We also have an extensive documentation section where you can find how all of our 114 refactoring rules exactly work and also on our channel you can find a few videos regarding JSparrow. In that sense I would say that's it with the video. If it helped you to understand what that or redundant code is, why it is dangerous and how it can be maintained then I would appreciate if you liked this video and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe. We regularly bring new programming related videos and if that's your thing be sure to subscribe. With that in mind I wish you a great day and have fun programming. Goodbye.